Hello, I'm going to be talking about um, Agrippa the first, who is the subject of my archaeological research for my master's thesis, except that I'm going to give the talk a historical emphasis. So um, Marcus Julius Agrippa the first was the grandson of Herod the Great and Mariamne, the Maccabean Jewish princess. The, the Herods were in fact um, borderline Jews and they were not accepted by um, many of the Jews in Judea for this reason. Um, but Mariamne was from the previous Hasmonean um, line loved by the Jews. Um, and so for that reason, um, Agrippa I um, had good prospects as being part Maccabee. So um, Agrippa, um, uh, when he was five, his mother Berenice took him and his, his siblings to Rome at the orders of Herod the Great um, to be raised there and um, uh, educated among the Julio-Claudian children and Romanize there and network. But one of the reasons for this um, was probably to prevent them from being further embroiled in conspiracy because Mariamne and, um, and Agrippa's father and uncle had just been involved in conspiracy against Herod the Great and had been put to death for it. So it was successful for Agrippa to grow up among the Julio-Claudians. He says um, in the record kept by Philo that he is um, a Roman and a Jew. So he was very Romanized. He, um, his mother, Berenice, became close in Rome to Antonia Minor, who was the daughter of Mark Antony, and he himself became close to Drusus, the son of Tiberius Caesar, who, um, after the death of Germanicus, Drusus soon became the heir apparent, according to Shaw, because in 21 he shared the consulship with his father, and his father in 22 gave him tribunician um, status and other indications. So he was at the peak of his career then, and so as his best friend and patron and client was Agrippa, um, both because of his connection to the heir apparent and um, because of his own background as being part Maccabee and his intelligence and he had quite a dynamic personality. Um, but it was in 23 CE that suddenly uh, the healthy athletic Drusus died and about eight years later it was decided that he had been poisoned by Sejanus, the Praetorian Prefect. And it makes logical sense that this would be true because um, Sejanus was extremely ambitious. He couldn't have become the next Caesar because he was equestrian rank, but he soon became um, um, Tiberius's next in command. And he was very close to Tiberius as his right-hand man, which put him at enmity with Drusus, who was Tiberius's son and heir apparent. And the two of them um, quarreled and it came to um, a bit of blows um, where Drusus struck Sejanus and so had Drusus become the next Caesar, Sejanus would not only have had problems with his career prospects, but probably also have been unsafe. So it does make logical sense that he would have wanted to get rid of Drusus, according to Shaw. And um, 
um, it was at this time that suddenly, um, also after the death of Agrippa's mother, Berenice, who died around the same time, that Agrippa's prospects were also gone. Um, he'd lost his patron. He couldn't find another one or a job. His inheritance, according to Daniel Schwartz, was quite small um, because of it having to be um, the, the inheritance of Herod the Great needing to be divided among so many descendants. Um, and he soon spent it because he tried to use it with... Um, gifts which were part of the the culture or custom for client princes reciprocal gifts to imperial freedmen to try to network and find a position and patron um, which didn't seem to work and he also tried to meet with tiberius um, for patronship and he was thwarted from doing so but being um, the best friend of Drusus, I believe that he probably had access to some incriminating information about Sejanus, and Sejanus um, probably felt a little unsafe, and uh, that's probably why he was thwarted. Um, Antonia... Um, uh, about eight years later, was the one who warned um, Tiberius about Sejanus. And in fact, um, uh, Daniel Schwartz suggests that Agrippa might have been the agent who gave her that information. In any case, um, soon, um, according to Josephus, he had a lot of creditors after him. He was in deep debt, and so he needed to flee to a remote part of Judea and go into hiding. Um, I don't believe that the reason was only because of the creditors. He did have creditors and he was years later, um, which was after the death of Sejanus, back to Italy. Antonia paid off the rest of his debt um, in a loan and Tiberius then welcomed him into his presence and gave him a job. So I don't believe creditors are his reason for fleeing to Judea or the main reason. In any case, he went to Judea um, and he fled to a remote um, town that had been abandoned and probably in a bit of ruin um, at the southernmost border of Judea. The town was called Malata, and he hid in a tower which might have been an agricultural tower. And, um, um, and according to archaeological um, excavations at the site which is believed to be Malatha, which is called Tel El Malat. Um, the, the site was abandoned um, just before the time of Herod the Great, probably in the time of Antipater, and, um, but it was sparsely inhabited according to the potsherd record in the first half of the first century, which would be the time that he was there. So he went into depression from the huge chain, change of fortune and being um, in hiding in the desert in a ruined town or abandoned town. And his wife, Kipros, um, found him and um, when he tried to commit suicide or contemplated it. And she then wrote to Herodias, his sister, who had just recently married Antipas. He had not gone there joining any of his family at the time. He had just gone into hiding. Um, I think this is indicative as well. And um, um, Antipas was in fact a friend and client of Sejanus. But with um, persuasion of Herodias um, and Kipras, um, 
Antipas did agree to give him a job as agronomist, and um, that was in Tiberias. And uh, in that case, he would have given him some sort of protection too, I would imagine, if my theories are correct. And there is um, an inscription um, record of an agronomist around the same time in Tiberius named Gaius Julius, but not Marcus Julius. We are not sure what this means. So um, his experience of going from um, such a high position to such um, a low, devastating situation seems to have changed him, uh, his approach, and made him a little cold. Um, the policy of Antipater and Herod the Great had been to be loyal to Rome, regardless of its leader, and to immediately change allegiance um, between leaders um, if an enemy even soon took over um, in power. But Agrippa had been loyal um, to Drusus in particular and had not been able to change allegiance somehow to Sejanus or being accepted by him or accepted, admi admitted into the presence of Tiberius. Um, so now um, he was a little bit more cynical, it seems. When he started his job for Antipas, he began to spy on him and he got some information that he, uh, he had a large arsenal um, that could have equipped an army and that he had had perhaps some um, little dealings with the Parthians who were the arch enemy of Rome and Judea was in the um, sensitive buffer state. And shortly afterwards he left um, Antipas and worked a short time for Flaccus, who was the governor of Syria. And it was probably around this time, which would be 31 um, CE, when Antonia found the right time to let um, Tiberius know her information about Sejanus. So Sejanus was put to death. And then we find that a year to two years later, Agrippa returns to Italy. Antonia pays off his debt and um, Tiberius welcomes him and gives him a job tutoring Gemellus, who is the son of Drusus. But according to his new approach now, um, he tutored Gemellus, but he made friends with Caligula, who was staying with Tiberius on Capri at the time because he um, probably saw in him that he would be more likely to be the next heir. Um, and because of his friendship with Caligula, when Tiberius died and Caligula did become the next Caesar, then he rewarded Agrippa with Praetorian uh, decorations, uh, um, the title of king and the first part of his kingdom. And so it, his new policy and approach paid off. Um, later, when he, um, when Antipas um, tried to compete with him um, over having a kingship title, because Antipas was only tetrarch, which is a prince, um, then he informed on Antipas the information he'd gathered. And when Caligula questioned Antipas, he, Antipas was not able to deny it. So Caligula took um, Antipas' uh, territory away from him and added that onto Agrippa's kingdom. When Caligula was assassinated, according to Barbara Levick, um, uh, Claudius, the uncle of Caligula, might have been um, at the hidden um, center of the conspiracy against Caligula or connected with it. Um, it seems that Claudius was able to let others take blame for whatever he did. Um, he was a little bit covert or manipulative, it seems, um, according to that theory. 
so in any case, when um, Caligula uh, learned about the assassin, when um, Agrippa learned about the assassination, he immediately swore allegiance to Caligula, um, to Claudius, and um, approached him in the Praetorian barracks, um, where he was protected by the Praetorians, and then went to the Senate and persuaded them not to revolt and to swear allegiance as well. And in turn, again, Claudius rewarded him with the rest of his kingdom, which was larger than the size of the kingdom of Herod the Great. Um, this is despite his friendship, his genuine friendship with Caligula, because he secretly buried him afterwards and told his sisters about it. So um, after that, um, it seems that the um, his swing from high to low to high uh, and pulling himself out of crisis through his own efforts and brains um, gave him a renewed confidence and recognition of his ability once again. And since he had grown up so close to the Julio-Claudians, um, he, uh, he had a great confidence and um, we can see that in one of his coins, which he minted the following year. Um, according to Crop, this coin might have offended the Romans and I think perhaps also Claudius, because it shows Claudius being crowned by Agrippa and his younger brother Herod of Chalcis, where um, unusually they are not smaller than Claudius, but the same size, their heads on the same level, and they seem to show a spirit of power in the way that they hold the crowns or the wreaths over the head of Claudius. Um, this is probably because of Agrippa's um, confidence in how he was raised among them and how he dealt with them. Um, aside from their careers. So um, this together with a couple of other things, he shows his independence. So he began to build a wall around Jerusalem, which Josephus says um, had he completed, this is around the northern part of Jerusalem, um, the third wall, would have um, prevented successfully any ability to invade Jerusalem. Um, Marsus, the new governor, had some enmity towards um, Agrippa, probably because his own career wasn't going too well, and stopped him from building the wall, contacted Claudius, who told him to stop, so he did. At the same time, Marsus also broke up a meeting that Agrippa had with some lesser client kings, also in the buffer zone in the same area, who were Jews and Jewish converts all connected to him. Um, and he did both things without the permission of Rome. He did them independently. So this indicates his confidence. He, he couldn't become um, Caesar because he was not ethnically Roman, um, but he probably felt um, that he had achieved so much and he wanted to keep going with his ambitions and maybe be the um, major person or politician in the area, but this brought him at loggerheads with, with Marsus, the governor of Syria. Syria actually was supposed to have jurisdiction over Judea. Um, he also clashed um, with Greeks, uh, Greek groups in the diaspora and in Judea because of his absolutely pro-Jewish policy. In this way, he differed from all the other um, Herods um, because he was the only one that the Jews actually loved. They were not fond of the other ones. They saw them as usurpers, um, but not him. And, um, and this and several other things um, gives reason to or gives motivation for a potential assassination. So on the day that he first was struck down, um, he was speaking in the theater 
in Caesarea. And um, perhaps he was doing this to try also to get more support from the Greeks um, who were among the pagan population in Caesarea. And he put on um, shining silver robes and um, people that he may have planted in the crowd, among others, called out, he is not a man but a god, which was actually um, pretty common or typical thing in the Greek part of the Roman Empire, but um, it wasn't um, approved by the Jews or the Romans. But anyway, um, he immediately had severe gut pain and he died five days later. Um, in fact, um, it has been suggested that arsenic can cause these symptoms in very high doses, severe gut pain, death five days later, and it's very difficult to trace um, because it's tasteless. It can also be breathed in. Um, so these are some of the possibilities and um, thank you for your attention.